Hi, welcome back to the uh, Swift Fox build channel and another uh, build update video. I'm just about to get ready to rivet in the detent brackets into the center console so I can finish its installation. Got pretty much everything I need uh, all set up here. This isn't the first time I've used a rivet gun either. Um, I was at uh, AirVenture in 2009 and I attended one of the uh, metalworking workshops and together with a guy called Gordon Orr, I think he was from the east coast of Australia, we had put together uh, this little uh, piece here and we uh, put in both flush head and standard head uh, rivets. And last week I kind of replicated this example again here uh, just to get familiar with the gun again and I'm pretty happy with the results so I'm, I'm feeling like I can do it proper now on the console. Another builder who had also done this, a guy called Kevin Olson, gave me some advice on the uh, builder forums. Uh, he, had talk, he talked about when he did his, by the time he went to put the center console back into the fuselage, it had kind of bowed a little bit. And, you know, keeping that in mind, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start riveting the um, adjustable rudder pedal uh, brackets and go from here this way and then do the flap handle bracket and start here and go this way. And I think that should mean that the um, any pressure that gets applied with the, the rivets going in would be outwards lengthening the console rather than kind of inward maybe bowing it. I'm not too sure, I'm just kind of winging it. But that's kind of what's making sense in my head so I'm gonna go ahead with that. Be, uh, before I do get started though, I do need to mix up a little bit of high saw. The manual calls for a uh, high saw between uh, the bracket and the console might not be necessary given uh, this is all aluminum anyway but i'm going to do it because it's in the manual so i'll mix up a really small amount get that uh, applied on and then uh, start riveting All right, this ended up turning out pretty nice. Um, no bowing or anything like that, uh, like uh, Kevin had experienced, so I'm pretty happy. Got um, proper travel of all the uh, handles. Now, a couple of times the uh, rivet gun did jump off the head of the rivet, so probably gonna have to do some super fill anyway to clean it up a little bit. But otherwise, super happy. Gonna move on now to, uh, I think, the uh, header tank. So the mounting holes have been drilled in the header tank uh, and I've been able to fit it into the fuselage. And right after that, I worked on installing um, these fittings into the header tank. These are where the feed lines from the fuel tanks and the wings uh, connect into the header tank. And pretty much straight away when I'd done uh, the first two, I kind of thought there was a bit of a problem. Visually looking at them, uh, 
I felt that there was a lot of threads not engaged that were kind of outside and I thought that a lot more of them should have been uh, engaged, uh, you know, maybe leaving one or two out. And I confirmed this sentiment with a few other builders on the forum and with the hangar neighbor. Um, it was felt that there should have been a few more in and other builders have had to tap uh, their header tank more to get those threads in. I also had uh, over tightened these two fittings going in. I hadn't realized there was a procedure uh, for these specific ones. These are the NPT standard and they're a tapered thread. So I should have just twisted them finger tight and then maybe one or two more turns with the wrench. Uh, but in reality, I really uh, hocked hard on them. So we took them out and, and inspected the threads and sure enough, the two I did, uh, the first couple of threads are a little bit mushed. So I've ordered a tap and I'm gonna fix uh, those by retapping them again. And I'm gonna retap all of the rest of them as well, just to make sure that all of the rest of the fittings that are gonna go in um, can get enough depth. So while I'm waiting for all of those things to come in, I'm gonna park this and move on to uh, working on the autopilot servo install. I've taken the horizontal stabilizer out of the fuselage in order to install the trim position sensor kit. And the first part of that is to install this uh, position bracket. It's what makes contact with uh, the sensor and it goes on the underside of the stabilizer here. And it needs to run horizontal with the stabilizer. So I've uh, put this blue tape across that plane in order to be able to position um, the bracket appropriately. Now, I'm pretty much ready to install this and I would bond this in right now, except for reading further through the instructions, I'm a little bit worried about doing that. Uh, I'll explain why. So the instructions call out having the stabilizer installed and adjusted in order to find out the position of the uh, sensor. And they say to put the stabilizer into maximum nose up trim that would mean the leading edge of the stabilizer is all the way down. And then position the sensor such that it's just touching the uh, position bracket. When the stabilizer then is in maximum nose down uh, orientation, the, positions, the switch is gonna be depressed by the position bracket. But they're calling you out to do this because in the pictures and the instructions, there's no mounting hole or nothing um, about the sensor already. My sensor though, it does have a mounting hole drilled in it and there's a hole for its screw in the fuselage already. So this is actually fixed position. I can't really change it. So I'm a little worried now about bonding this bracket in to the horizontal stabilizer, putting the stabilizer back in, putting the sensor into position and there being a gap between them when it's in the full uh, nose up trim. So I think what I need to actually do is I need to put the horizontal stabilizer back into the fuselage, put the sensor in, and then make sure, confirm that this plane here I have established with this blue tape is actually still appropriate um, 
to make sure there's contact here with the sensor. Uh, if it's not, I might have to change the uh, you know, angle slightly of this uh, bracket just to make sure there's, um, there's some contact. I'm hoping I don't need to bond this in, bond this onto the horizontal stabilizer while it's in the fuselage because it's kind of tight uh, uh, space to work in and that's why I pulled it off uh, onto the table here. But I don't want to attach it and then find out that there's actually a problem later so I'm going to have to get this back in and that's going to require some help. So I'm going to need to uh, find a friend to come out and help me put this back into the fuselage. Uh, I managed to get it out myself, uh, but I'm not going to get it in, I don't think, on my own. So I've pretty much finished everything I wanted to get done with the header tank uh, for this stage. The replacement fittings arrived and the NPT tap arrived. And with the help of Brett, uh, a hangar neighbor from a couple of doors down, we uh, re-tapped these ports and put in the fittings. There's still quite a lot of threads showing, but there's really no way to get them uh, down any further. It's just kind of the nature of uh, the taper. Brett had suggested that maybe uh, cutting off a couple of millimeters of the top of these, um, uh, I think they're called bungs, uh, would have got the fittings to go in deeper, but you know, don't really have the tooling to do that. So we're, gonna, we're just gonna make do, and we're pretty confident it'll, it'll probably be fine. The elbow fittings here, we haven't actually uh, you know, permanently fitted in as of yet. Uh, another suggestion Brett had was to maybe wait until the fuel lines are being run so we know which direction we want the elbow to go. And even in uh, looking at the manual, I think I saw um, two diagrams with them in different directions. So uh, just kind of leaving them in and loose at the moment. A change I did make uh, to, the, to what it said in the manual was uh, I used a different drain valve for the bottom of the header tank. The one supplied with the kit is just a push valve uh, to release the fuel and I swapped it for uh, one that can lock open. And the reason I did that was this is the lowest point in the fuel system. And if you know, I'm ever draining the, 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 all the fuel out of the wings and the full system, uh, that's probably the point at which I'm gonna do it. And having the ability to lock that open and be able to walk away as the fuel comes out is kind of um, uh, desirable. So put in a, uh, a locking uh, valve instead. Other than that, um, I held off on putting the flange on the bottom of the header tank as well. Uh, this is a, a flange that interfaces with the, the fabric on the bottom of the aircraft to give you access to that uh, uh, drain on the bottom. I did dry fit it to make sure that the drain valve is uh, uh, inside the fuselage and not poking out through and that when I do come to put the covering on, I can just attach that flange and, and everything will be good. 
So kind of happy where this is uh, right now and uh, going to keep going. So let's uh, catch up on the Autopilot Servo Kit installation. So here we are at the roll servo uh, position. And this is a pretty easy install, just this bracket needed to be bonded and riveted in and the servo attaches to it. And I also connected up the um, rod arm for the servo that connects to the uh, flapper on uh, our push rod here. Now, nothing is rigged up in terms of final length, so I haven't attached the cage that protects the servo from uh, over rotating. And I'm probably gonna look at rigging the flight controls um, you know, relatively soon or you know, pretty soon just so that I can get that cage on and, and, and um, verify a travel, etc. Here at the uh, pitch servo position, it was a little bit trickier to get this mounted in. So this plate uh, was a little bit warped um, coming from the factory. Now I did check with Heather and she said, you know, a little bit of encouragement to get that in is going to be fine. So spent a bit of time in the vise just kind of um, straightening it out. But once the servo was mounted to it and that little bit of teasing had happened, it, it kind of sat in nicely. And that got bonded on these uh, three positions here. And then these, um, these ties are holding it down as well. And just like the roll servo, I've connected up the rod arms all the way to um, the bell crank for the um, pitch push rod, but nothing is rigged as of yet. So um, the cage isn't on here either. So last but not least, I've got the uh, trim position sensor installed. Now, initially I was kind of worried that this bracket wouldn't touch the uh, sensor if it was mounted in horizontally on the level with the horizontal stabilizer. And when I mounted in the horizontal stabilizer, I did verify that that uh, fear was in fact true. Uh, the, there was about a half inch gap between the bracket and the sensor. Now, my original thought was that I would change the position of this bracket so that it angled maybe a little bit up to make contact with the sensor. But when I looked at it, I realized that in, I should just instead change where the sensor is. This original hole that was in the fuselage uh, was too high and I could just figure out where the sensor needed to be and drill a new hole uh, for it. And that's what I did. So I made sure that uh, when it was in full uh, nose up uh, orientation that it was just touching the sensor like it is now. And then I made this mark here, which is the half inch of travel that the sensor switch has. And in full nose down with the horizontal stabilizer leading edge all the way up, I made sure that that mark was still visible so that we didn't top out the sensor in moving the horizontal stabilizer up. Now, with the sensor on the front side of this tab, it did kind of top out the sensor, but when I put it on the back like this, it didn't. And that's different to how the manual shows, but I think it's uh, pretty much the same. So that's pretty much going to be it for now for the header tank, the autopilot servos and the trim position sensor. And this video, I'm going to end this one here. Next up, I'm probably going to work on the end caps for the horizontal stabilizer, vertical stabilizer, elevator and rudder. Kind of been putting them off and I should just do them now. So the next video will probably be a quick update on, on how I did with those. So thanks for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.